Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, we're going to solve the damped harmonic oscillator with a specific set of initial conditions and we're going to use the Laplace transform technique. The harmonic oscillator is widespread in physics and we're going to look at the prototype harmonic oscillator problem that's looked at in introductory physics classes and that's the ideal spring. Now the ideal spring obeys Hooke's law and Hooke's law is given by Knight's little equation F equals minus kx. Now we're going to take the equilibrium position that is when the spring is neither stretched nor compressed to be x naught which I'm going to call zero. This is x equals zero here. So there's no force that the spring exerts on the mass because the, sp because the spring is neither stretched nor compressed. Now if I stretch the spring by pulling the mass to the right a distance x then k is the constant with the minus sign in front and k is positive so that means that the force will be to the left. If you should compress the spring by making x negative pushing in like this then a negative x with this minus sign will give you a positive force pushing you to the right. k is called the spring constant and here we have added frictional force, the second term here, and the frictional force is taken in this ideal model to be proportional to the velocity, b is a positive value, and the velocity can be positive or negative, friction always works against you. So if the velocity is positive, if you're moving to the right, friction is working against you, the frictional force to the left. If you're moving to the left, where you're moving in the negative direction, so your velocity is negative, two negatives will cancel and the frictional force will be to the right. Newton's second law says sum up all the forces algebraically. Here's a one-dimensional problem and set it equal to ma. F equals ma. Newton's second law. Here the x is a function of time. The velocity is the first derivative of x with respect to time and the acceleration is the second derivative of x with respect to time. So we have a differential equation. I have simply brought the kx to the same side as the MA and the BV. So we have these three plus signs here and that's our differential equation. We want to solve that for given initial conditions that I have chosen, these specific ones, to pull the mass to the right, a distance capital A, so here's x equals zero and then there'll be a distance uh, A here that will move the center to the right. And we'll then tap it slightly to the left at t is equal to zero so that there is an initial velocity given by minus b over 2n times capital A. These are conditions that are given to you so we start with these as part of the problem and solve the differential equation. Well we're going to need the Laplace transform of derivatives and here are the results. Uh, you can remember the second one and the first one with certain tricks here. Uh, how about this? S squared knock down one power, since you're using s squared by the way because that's the second derivative so we have an s squared and then we knock down one power of s and then we knock down another power of s which gives us s to the zero which is simply a one. Then we put two minus signs in there and we then have our first initial condition and then our second one so the first one is just the uh, little f of zero and the second one is a derivative see, of the function and then set t equal to zero. Over here I have one derivative so I just have one power of s and then when I knock down by one power I have no power of s which is a one here and then simply uh, have just the one initial condition and I have a minus sign. So here I have two minus signs the second derivative has two minus signs. I have s squared s and s to the zero and then here I have simply s and s to the zero. So that's a neat little way to help remember that. Step one, take the Laplace transform. So we do that by simply uh, putting in the Laplace transform of the second derivative into the second derivative term here. And the first derivative, Laplace transform, just put that in here. And just remember that little f is x and f prime is v. And then we have this equation. Last thing to do is to replace the initial conditions. Whenever you see x of zero, you put in capital A, that's two places. And whenever you see v evaluated t equals to zero, you put in this negative thing, but that negative there will cancel that negative and you'll have b over 2m times capital A. The Laplace transform over here is simply k times the Laplace transform uh, of x. That's where this came from, the Laplace transform of the kx. So k times the Laplace transform of 
x, and the Laplace transform of this zero is simply zero. Step two, solve your algebraic equation, and we'll do that by factoring out capital F of s, so I have ms squared, I have a b times s, and I have a k there. And then here I have a minus sma, which I'll bring to the other side of the equation as a plus msa. Here I have b over 2, since that m will cancel that m, so b over 2a brought to the other side is a minus b over 2 times a. And here I have minus ba on the other side is plus ba. Then what I do is I simply combine these last two. This is AB and an AB over 2 and a negative sign, so that's simply going to be AB over 2, and I'll pull the A out, so I have here A out here and then B over 2, and then this MSA is simply MS because the A has been pulled out, and I divide by this stuff. Step 3, take the inverse Laplace transform by use of the table. So use the Laplace transform table to get your solution. I need the inverse Laplace transform of this. And when I cruise the tables, I see that this looks promising. Here I have an S, I have an S. I'm going to factor out the M in just a second. So I'll have an S and then I'll have a constant and I have C here an S squared and an S, which from this you get S squared and some S power and then other stuff. Will that work? Well, let's first divide by m to clean things up. So we divide top and bottom by m, so we have s plus b over 2m, and then we have s squared plus b over m times s plus k over m. And then I look at this, and I see that I can complete the square down here if I add and subtract something, because I can't change the equation, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to add here b over 2m quantity squared and if I do that and subtract this, so here I'm subtracting it but I'm going to add it so that over in here if I had that added here I'd have a completed square. In other words if I square this I get s squared plus 2sb over 2m which is simply going to be sb over m, so you say sb over m, and then I'll have b squared over 4m squared, but I'm going to subtract that so that I don't change the equation. So by adding and subtracting that, I then have my completed square, and then I see that I have my solution here, a is b over 2m, see there's a in two places, a is in two places, it agrees, and omega squared is everything else here. So that means that b over 2m is my a, which goes in that exponent up there, and then omega is going to be the square root of all this stuff here. Notice that a will hang around and will be in front here when I complete my solution. So let's uh, remember that. a is b over 2m, and omega squared is then k over m minus the b over 2m squared that I had to subtract. So let's do that here. a is b over 2m and omega squared is k over m minus the b over 2m squared I had to subtract. And then I have my solution. Here it is. And we're going to make these uh, parameters look cleaner as they do in physics class. In physics class they say if there's no friction if b equals 0 then omega squared is simply k over m. They call that the omega naught squared. So omega naught is square root of k over m. The harmonic oscillator with no damping, with no friction. Then they notice that this combination here, if you should have friction, it'd be neat to call this by its Greek letter beta, all the whole thing. So b over 2m is the Greek b, beta, and then the equations look real cute. Then here, omega squared is omega naught squared minus beta squared, and a is simply beta, so there's a neat little beta in here, minus beta t, and then that omega is given by a nice formula, which we'll summarize for you here, and give you a little picture of the graph here, function. So here we have the uh, constant out in front, and we have here beta, which is our, our a, that goes up in here with the at, b over 2m, see it's minus beta t up there, and the omega that goes in with the cosine is given by taking the square root 
of omega squared, which is the square root of omega naught squared minus b beta squared, that, that whole thing, take the square root of it. So here's our picture. Notice that we have oscillations here. Cosine uh, starts out up here. If t is equal to 0, you have 1 times 1 times a. So that's our initial condition, the initial condition a. And the cosine here is going to cause the oscillations here in the picture. And this uh, damping factor is going to multiply it and kill it off. See in an exponential decay kind of way. Notice that the velocity at t equals 0 is not 0. It's not flat there. In fact, there's a negative slope, and that's this here, minus b over 2m, which is simply minus beta. I chose that intentionally because I wanted this neat solution. The last thing we are going to do is to show you how to get the time it takes to do one cycle, the period. And you may recall from an earlier class, we had these equations, omega is equal to 2 pi f, which is equal to 2 pi over t, your period. So your period is 2 pi over omega, and that gives you the time it takes to do one cycle on its way to decreasing amplitude over and over the cycle so that eventually it dies down to zero.